So, we continue our discussion uh, on diffusion phenomena and last time if you remember I left you at a point when I said that uh, in solving uh, the mass conservation or the molar conservation equations uh, that is the Laplace equation that we generate uh, following a, a mass balance uh, and applying the fixed law uh, we need to have the surface concentrations and while the heat and the mass there is a lot of similarities between uh, conduction heat transfer and diffusion process both be, being atomistic in nature. Uh, I have told you that while in heat transfer uh, the given boundary temperatures are mostly experimentally measured in contrast in the case of uh, problems with the diffusions uh, we will see that the surface concentrations which are needed to solve the con you know, concentration profile within a domain will be derived uh, from the consideration of chemical equilibria. We will see in metallurgical problems and as we go through the course even today there will be two three examples in which we will see uh, how to reduce that surface concentration. So, once we do that uh, for a number of times uh, you know it, you will register it and I think you will get uh, used to uh, the application of kinetic fundamentals in order to derive the surface uh, concentrations. And these surface concentrations which you know we will see in metallurgical particularly in uh, metals processing uh, because mass transfer is either preceded or followed by you know uh, chemical reaction uh, either mass will be transported and then okay, you know and or, or you know that metallurgical processes very rarely give you homogeneous reactions these are all heterogeneous reactions. So, therefore, at different phases you know the constituents migrate and only then when they come in contact the chemical reaction does takes place. So, the chemical or uh, even after the reaction the products also will get away uh, from the reaction site. So, that the rea reaction can continue otherwise according to solubility product principles we know that the reaction will come to a halt. So, mass transfer and chemical reactions are intricately re re related in our systems and on the basis of consideration of chemical equilibria we will see again that how this surface concentrations are determined. I will now introduce you to a class of problem uh, which is concerned with steady state diffusion and uh, this is uh, permeation of a gas through a metallic membrane. metal membrane. You can consider for example, you know a vessel and here you have this is the exaggerated metal film and this could be for example, you know we can have nitrogen gas here and this is at a high temperature T okay, and this side uh, initially does not contain anything. So, if we keep the entire suppose this could be a platinum foil and then the nitrogen gas or nitrogen uh, diffuses through the platin platinum foil and goes to this side. So, this diffusion process because there is a solid obstruction on the passage of nitrogen, nitrogen concentration is high, nitrogen concentration is 0 to start with. So, there is inherent tendency for nitrogen to diffuse and uh, often the interest is that uh, you know we want to find out that what is the rate of permeation and because that allows us to calculate the permeability constant and, and also uh, the diffusion coefficient through a medium. So, this is a standard experimental setup for the measurements of diffusion coefficient because unless we know the diffusion coefficients we will not be able to carry out any calculations. So, now what is the process? So, if you have suppose let us consider that it is pure nitrogen gas okay, and the entire thing we say that is P T is equal to 1 atmosphere and T is the temperature it is a high temperature uh, problem. So, if total gas content here is essentially nitrogen then what happens is there is essentially no concentration gradient between here and here. Okay. So, the nitrogen gas is available right at the interface where nitrogen as a gas through metal will not diffuse, nitrogen will have to dissociate as you all know 
and this law you must be knowing. And where does this gas reaction occurs? This reaction occurs at the gas and the solid interface which is this particular line. So this is the site of the reaction. Okay? So from the gas phase, nitrogen goes into the metal phase in the dissolved state. And this is the consequence, this is the dissolution of diatomic gases in metal which follows Sieverts law. So we can write that K is equal to the equilibrium constant is equal to, I will come to that point that why we consider equilibrium and we will say that this is the concentration of nitrogen in the metal phase and this is the concentration of nitrogen in the gas phase. So we will write it. The third bracket always in metallurgical discussions essentially implies that it is dissolved or it is in the metal phase. Second bracket essentially implies it is the gas phase and if I write first bracket it essentially implies that the material is contained in the slack phase. So that is a standard nomenclature for us. We will see how the concentrations can be expressed. Now so therefore the diffusion of nitrogen we want to calculate the rate of diffusion the, but that diffusion is preceded by this chemical reaction that nitrogen will dissociate and then the atomic nitrogen will diffuse through this. The moment the atomic nitrogen reaches here after a time t okay, and let us say that this, this is our cross sectional area and this is the radius and our area is equal to pi this is r0 square okay that is the cross sectional area through which this is the end elevation i have drawn okay so <coughs> that's what it is once nitrogen reaches the atomic nitrogen reaches at this interface a reverse reaction takes place and then from the gas dissolved phase nitrogen gets into the gas phase and from the gas it gets diffused into the system so, here again we can say that the transport of nitrogen, that the nitrogen, we will not allow the gaseous nitrogen to remain here because otherwise if the nitrogen content in continuously increases, in that case what happens is the reaction will tend to go into the reverse reaction. Okay? So, whatever nitrogen comes here and the nitrogen, there may be a carrier gas which is flushed here, it may be argon and this argon is dragging all the nitrogen out whatsoever is diffusing through this metallic membrane. So, a reverse reaction takes place at this particular interface and then the gaseous nitrogen forms and the gaseous nitrogen is gradually swept into the by a carrier gas itself. So, after some time what is going to happen? The process will attain a steady state okay? because at given at long time the steady state is going to be encountered and if we, if steady state is encountered then we can say that if delta represents the thickness of the foil then we will say that the flux essentially of nitrogen is going to be equal to or I will write not gaseous nitrogen and this is going to be our diffusion coefficient into C1 minus C2 divided by L delta in which D represents the diffusion coefficient of nitrogen through platinum that is what it is N dash platinum. C1 and C2 are the concentration of nitrogen at this point which is C1 and at this point which is C2. So, it is Cn1 and Cn2. Now, on the basis of this since there are two steps involved in the diffusion process. First is the chemical reaction and then once the chemical reaction takes place then the diffusion starts. So, the overall rate of nitrogen diffusion that, that the rate at which the nitrogen is crossing at this barrier is actually a summation of the rate this the rate of the chemical reaction plus the summation plus the rate of diffusion. So, that determines at what. So, I may be collecting you know the number of nitrogen molecules coming at this particular site. So, suppose I say that my I do the gas analysis here and I find out that you know over a time say 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 10 minutes I find out that what is the Q moles of nitrogen gas which is coming out 
from this you know chamber and then i can say that that j will be is equal to q multiplied by 2 divided by a into t what does q essentially indicates the q indicates number of moles of nitrogen gas coming out through the area a which is pi r square in a time t, t. so if it is number of moles so number of moles per unit area per unit time so that becomes flux and because it is nitrogen moles and in every n2 there are two nitrogen atoms so the factor of 2 is multiplied by here so that represents so i should be able to find it out now and this q essentially is truly speaking is a function of because this chemical reaction also has a finite rate okay so the rate of the chemical reaction plus the rate of the diffusion determines actually q but we will make a simple assumption here we will say that this chemical reaction operates the diffusion is a much slow process on the other hand rate of chemical reaction is going to be faster and we know because we are talking of high temperature as a result of which we know from Arrhenius rate law that the rate of chemical reactions are going to be significantly large in most of the majority of the cases so therefore there are two processes working in series one is the diffusion process which we know is a inherently slow process on the other hand we have the chemical reaction which has high temperature is very very fast so we can say that relative to the diffusion there is a chance that this chemical reaction will reach equilibrium first so by the time we reach to the steady state we can assume that this chemical reaction is occurring at under equilibrium condition or this has reached equilibrium condition and this high assumption allows us to find out that what is the concentration of nitrogen at this particular surface for example i can say that if we write down this equation the equilibrium constant becomes equal to the concentration of nitrogen divided by square root of pn2 the concentration of nitrogen okay in the gas phase if you assume that you know the gas is even if you assume that the gas contains a mixture of the gases we can assume that the gas is behaving like uh, an ideal gas so the activity of nitrogen in the gas phase that's what it is actually the activity of nitrogen in the gas phase is, is equal to its mole fraction and that mole fraction of nitrogen is, is equal to p nitrogen partial pressure of nitrogen by p total that's what it is that's how the concentration and once i know so suppose if i would have said that that this is not pure nitrogen it contains you know an inert gas like argon or you know uh, uh, what do you call uh, any other inert gas we can take consider you know xenon radon etc and it's a mixture of the two where nitrogen has a partial pressure of is equal to 0.5 equal mole fractions in that case i would say activity of nitrogen is, is equal to mole fraction of nitrogen which is 0.5 which is equal to pn2 divided by p2 if this is 0.5 and this is one this essentially implies that it is partial pressure and again because we have considered ideal gas this pn2 can be converted to pn2 by rt is, is equal to we have c n by v the number of moles per unit volume is equal to p n 2 by r 2 so this allows us to convert partial pressure into a number of moles per unit volume kind of an unit because we know that the concentration as i said either it will be expressed in terms of mass concentration or molar concentration mass concentration means kg per meter cube and molar concentration means kg moles per meter cube so if you get partial pressure of nitrogen we can translate it to the corresponding kg, kg moles per meter cube simply by considering the gas constant and the applicable temperature so if you so therefore on the basis of this we can say that this will become partial pressure nitrogen square root okay on the basis of this and this concentration can be k of nitrogen is, will be equal to k p square root p n2 so the concentration at equilibrium when, when steady state is reached so the concentration here will be square root of the partial pressure in the gas phase the concentration here will be square root of proportional to square root of partial pressure in accordance with this particular formula so therefore we can now say that this concentration so now you have seen that the high 
the assumption of a reaction occurring close to the equilibrium allows us to determine the surface concentration which are needed in the one dimensional expression of flux. So, therefore, I can say that I can now write d n p t into k square root of k. Okay? So, that is C n here and if you if you, if you consider uh, in this particular case k into p n 2 square root of p n 2 and this is p n 2 at I would say left that is C 1 which is left boundary and this is right boundary okay? and then this is minus square root of p n 2 right and the whole thing is divided by delta in which delta represents you, you know this I have you know this is a standard uh, one dimensional equations if you take this uh, so from this one dimensional uh, mass conservation or molar conservation equation this is the consequence of this particular equation that I have discussed in the last class. It is also same as the you know one dimensional heat conduction equation where you have temperature differential multiplied by thermal conductivity divided by the distance across which heat transfer takes place. In this case it is concentration difference multiplied by diffusion coefficient divided by the distance in which it takes place. Now in this particular case the product diffusion coefficient into k is termed as So, if you know that what is the flux, we simply multiply by area which is pi r 0 square and then we should be able to get that what is uh, the rate of permeation. So, the rate of permeation n dot I can say is equal to j of n multiplied by the area which is pi r 0 square okay? that is what it is and if we equate this two expressions then we get d nitrogen. So, we have permeability which is designated typically as pi okay? and then we get pi by delta into square root p n 2 left minus square root p n 2 right and that is equal to 2 times q divided by T. Or we can say that pi the permeability can be now 2 times q delta divided by A into T P n 2 left minus. So, simply by measuring the number of moles which is coming out of uh, uh, you know coming to the right crossing this particular film uh, foil simply by measuring this particular quantity which is number of moles over a certain period of time t one should be able to find out and invoking that there is equilibrium as far as the surface chemical reactions are concerned one should be able to determine the permeability and knowledge of Sivert's law constant will give us an idea once we have determined permeability and if we know the Sivert's law constant then we should be able to find out that what is the diffusion coefficient that is the diffusion coefficient of nitrogen through platinum. This trial can be conducted for a number of temperature and then we can find out the corresponding equation that what is the activation energy of diffusion. And how we can plot? We can, if we plot the diffusion coefficient as a function of 1 by t, then the slope of the line gives us a measure of the activation energy of diffusion. So, this parameter can be determined by simply measuring the diffusion coefficient over a function of temperature. At several temperatures, we will find out what the q is, we will apply the equation, estimate pi, we will go there 
and then is using the pi value of pi as well as the corresponding Sivar's law constant will determine d and then make a plot between d and 1 by t and the slope of the top figure will give us the activation energy of the function. On a logarithmic scale of course, we will plot ln d okay, and 1 by t <coughs> and that will give us the activity you know the slope of the line will give us uh, a measure of q sub d which is the activation energy of diffusion. So, I think I have now given you more insight of how the surface concentrations are determined. So, we must remember that when you solve diffusion problems, okay, the surface concentration may not be supplied we may have to consider carry out some thermodynamic calculations, we may carry out some equilibrium calculations and based on that for example, k you must be knowing that where from k is known, k is known from delta g naught of variation of standard free energy change as a function of temperature for this, where are such informations available in handbooks, in thermodynamics uh, textbooks, many places you will find that delta g naught for this particular reaction as a function of temperature is given and that allows us that what is k to be known at a given temperature and then simply by measuring the partial pressure okay, because it is on the left hand side it is known to us we should be able to find out. So, the equilibrium consideration becomes a characteristic exercise of solving all mass transfer problems and that we will see throughout our subsequent discussion in this particular course. We will come back to diffusion through solids. Okay. Now, let me introduce to you that what is the steady state diffusion phenomena in gases. And as I said that uh, the gases may have you know uh, while in solids uh, we do not see any bulk motion. Uh, particularly in multi component systems uh, in gases we will see a bulk motion which will be superimposed uh, on the diffusion and I have introduced that diffusion velocity, diffusion length scale, diffusion time scale earlier in my last lecture and today now I am going to see that how does because we want to study the diffusion in gases. So, from the overall rate we have to now take away somehow the bulk transport part and so that we can really isolate diffusion and then analyze it or subject it to mathematical analysis. Now, you can imagine that we have a vertical tube here, vertical you know say one enclosed cylindrical uh, container and we can have for example, a gas and this gas may be a lighter gas and this may gas may be a heavier gas. So, so you have maybe argon and oxygen, argon is heavier than oxygen. Now, the moment, so there is a partition here, the moment the partition is removed, then what happens is uh, the oxygen because there is a concentration gradient of oxygen, it is high concentration here and it is low concentration here, then the oxygen will start diffusing because, because of the concentration gradient. Similarly, argon is a higher concentration, argon is a lower concentration, so argon will try to diffuse in the opposite direction and on top of this concentration difference driven motion of the molecules, okay, we will see that because argon, argon is heavier, it has a natural tendency to settle down. Now, so therefore, when I will you know from a fixed frame of reference, if I look at the motions of oxygen and argon, their motion are going to be superimposed. There are two things that will be working simultaneously one is because of the characteristic concentration difference there is a diffusion velocity of oxygen in the up. Okay. But on top of that there is going to be an overall influence of the velocity of the up going because this is lighter. So, the buoyancy that it is experiencing in the surrounding that has to be also considered. Now, in this case we will introduce several terms to exp explain further. Say if I have so, it is a two component system and it can be generalized to any multi component system. So, therefore, if I say 
you know you imagine that the container is fixed with you know there are several gases here there are several gases here and then I have a fictitious interface here and I am trying to find out through this interface you know uh, how the gases are moving then we will find that if you have I, J, K, etcetera, the various species of gases, then we will find that a species, if I am here and evaluating it from a standard fixed frame of reference, then this I will be crossing this interface. Suppose it is crossing, it is high concentration, it is low concentration, it is crossing this interface with a certain velocity V i, and that is the velocity. that we represent. And what is this velocity? This velocity is the velocity that I measure okay, with respect to a fixed frame of reference. I am standing here watching it, the gas is flowing up and I am with certain kind of device in my hand, I am measuring the velocity. But this velocity is not the diffusion velocity because as I said, there would be upward flows and downward flows because of the overall motion. So, therefore, this is the absolute velocity and this is the total velocity. So, there are two components are hidden here in this particular velocity. One is the role of the diffusion and the other is the bulk component itself. If I multiply this with the corresponding concentration of C i, then what happens is this is kg per meter cube of i and this is meters per second. So, this becomes a flux. So, therefore, if V i is the velocity measured at this particular point and C i is the concentration of C i. C at this particular, then I can say that through this dotted line or the surfaces, this will represent the total transport of if V i is measured in this possible possible direction, in that case the flux is going to be. So, I say this is z in the positive z direction. Okay? This is a velocity, so this has a direction and this velocity I am saying is when I am measuring this velocity is directed in this particular direction measured with respect to a fixed frame of reference. And if I multiply it by the corresponding concentration, then this now represents the total flux of species I at this particular cross section itself, which is composed or which can be decomposed into two parts. One is the diffusion flux and the other is the flux due to the bodily transport. So, therefore, I would say that the diffusion flux, if I represented it by J of I, which is, is equal to minus C of D of I, and I say that this is in the medium, the diffusion coefficient of the species I in the multi component mixture. Okay. C is the molar density, and this is X of I into this set. That is according to Fick's law, this represents the flux. And this is what? This is the diffusion flux. This flux and this flux is not identical. This is the total flux and this is the diffusion flux. So, from the total flux, if I can subtract the bodily transport, then only I will get the diffusion flux. So, I can write that this is, is equal to C i into V i, which is the total flux minus the bodily transport term. Okay? And that bodily transport term is given in terms of C i into V bar, where V bar represents the molar average velocity through this particular cross section. What does this V, v bar essentially implies? This V bar is a as I said, V bar is a molar average velocity. So, C i into V i plus C j into V j plus C k into V k divided by summation of C m, where m is equal to i. That is what it is. Just like the way we have defined an area average or time average. Uh, thermal conductivity earlier, a time average heat flux. So, this becomes as you can see molar average. This is C i divided by C m or this is actually I would say this essentially represents the total C t or which I have represented actually 
as the same as the molar density which I have written here. Okay. So, summation of all the molecules okay, and per unit volume, if, so that becomes the C t and that by notation to be consistent I write it as C. And what is C i by C? C i by C i, C i by C essentially represents the mole fraction of i, C j by C essentially represents the mole fraction of j. So, this represents the what is this velocity? This velocity essentially is a molar average velocity okay? and this is what this is I am look you know this is the overall rate of velocity. This velocity could be this way, this velocity could be this way. Okay? I have not put any directions here, but this essentially implies that this is as I said this is the total flux of I and this is if I sub do it like this C divided by summation of C j V j or I can say C m V m where m is equal to I to something. And what is this? If I take this C out, the C i by C becomes x i. So, this gives us n i minus x i. Okay? And what does this essentially indicates? This indicates summation of n j, I will say of n m, because c, c, c into v essentially represents n okay? and because it is c m into v m, so I will say this is equal to n m, where m is equal to, that is how the equation will simplify. So, the diffusion flux, what I have done? The diffusion flux is equal to the total flux minus the bodily transport. And this essentially in indicates this is the total flux of I and this represents because of the bulk motion and that bulk motion is there is no fan here. Okay? The bulk motion is occurring because of the natural tendencies in the system okay? and that we can say that we can measure if you can measure that you know if there are i for i we will measure the velocity for j we will measure the velocity for k we will measure the velocity for all elements we measure the velocity and then we use this formula and that is how we find out that <coughs> what is uh, you know the molar average uh, velocity you can imagine for example if you take a pipe flow into which you know you have both uh, water and kerosene is supposed to or, 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 or oil is flowing in that case, if you know their relative mole fractions, okay, you should be able to find out a molar average velocity. So, velocity of water multiplied by the mole fraction of water plus velocity of kerosene or velocity of oil multiplied by mole fraction of oil divided by the total mole fraction which is 1 and that will give you a molar average velocity of the two component mixture. And because you have a multi component system here, so the multi component molar average velocity can be determined in this. So, therefore, the final expression I can now write that molar density into diffusion of I and this I will not write anything extra because this means the diffusion of diffusion coefficient of I in the mixture that we are considering and this is the mole fraction of I okay? and then this is equal to n I minus n I summation I will say j I change the notation it does not matter j is equal to i to whatever it is or 1 to we can say that includes i of course. So, suppose so that becomes our general expression statement of flux expressions. So, diffusion flux is equal to the total flux minus the bodily transport and this needs to be applied. And we must understand from this that if we assume a scenario that there is no bulk motion in the system as it happens in the case of solids. In that case, what is this component is due to the bulk motion. So, therefore, 
this component will become is equal to 0 and therefore, the total flux will be is equal to the diffusion flux or the flux according to the Fick's law. So, if we assume that there is no motion in that case the gas mixture is exactly like the solids and that is why I said when I wrote diffusion through solids I said diffusion through a motionless media okay, medium and it essentially implies that if you have no bulk motion okay, in that case the total flux is equal to exactly equal to the diffusion flux itself. But when there is a multi component system and there are you know gases moving in different directions in that case that term is not is equal to 0 and therefore, <coughs> we will not do multi component system in this course we will do basically two component systems diffusion of I through G or something like that and then we can say that minus C D 1 is, is equal to D X 1 n 1 minus n 1 into x 1 plus x. this is I wrote it wrong I think x i into n i yeah. So, for a two component system we have this and if we have stagnant uh, uh, scenario in that case what we are going to have that we have this term is equal to 0 as I have mentioned and this is going to be equal to. Now, in this case if you say that the surrounding is only stagnant that is another possibility that the surrounding is x stagnant. So, if the overall system is stagnant in that case this term does not come into the picture at all there is no bodily transport okay. it is a case of pure diffusion and that becomes the same case as we have dealt in in the solid. But suppose oxygen is diffusing and I assume that argon is stationary argon is not moving at all. Okay. If that is the case in that case so this is one is my oxygen. 2 is my argon and if I say that argon is not moving. So, therefore, we can say that n of argon is going to be is equal to 0 because n of argon is equal to c of argon into v of argon and that v of argon is 0 because I have assumed that the surrounding is equal to stagnant. So, diffusion through a surrounding stagnant will essentially let us do this, this and therefore, we will have n i into 1 minus x i or I will say that the expression for total flux becomes is equal to now C D 1 1 is my oxygen 2 is my argon okay, and this 2 is stagnant. So, therefore, I get this divided by 1 minus x of 1 into mole fraction. This capital X is mole fraction and z is the distance that represents <coughs> the total flux expression. Okay? So, it gets marginally modified than what we have seen in the context of fixed law as it is applied to a solid material. There is another case in which we have n 1 and n 2 are oppositely directed and what I say that case 2. So, when you have diffusion through a stagnant surrounding the flux expression is little bit modified from the fixed law as we have applied in the case of this needs to be noted. And now, the second case that we want to look at here is when n 1 is, is equal to minus n 2. That means, the total flux of oxygen 
and the total flux of argon are identical, but they are in the opposite because flux is a vector quantity. So, they are in the opposite direction. Can such a scenario occur that we will examine, but what happens if this is the case, in that case what happens to our, this is we call it as a generalized diffusion equation. So, we can start with this, we can say case 1 applicable to solid when the second term is totally is equal to 0, case 2 diffusion through a stagnant surrounding, this is the and case 3 when we have a special situation n 1 and n 2 are equal and directed oppositely. And this we call because we are dealing with molar diffusion flux, this is a specific scenario we call it as equimolar counter current because they are opposite. Is there a scenario that we can conceive physically? I shall say yes. So, when n 1 is equal to n 2, interestingly my flux expression now becomes l 1 is equal to minus c d 1 to x 1 minus we have x i into n 1 minus n 1 because that is what it is and this term becomes equal to 0. So, we have again the pure as the equation which we apply for fixed law becomes applicable. So, the fixed equivalent counter current diffusion the second component the contribution of the second component gets nullified. Okay? So, that means that the overall bulk velocity becomes is equal to 0 because the downward motion is exactly equal to the upward motion. To look at a scenario here, I would say that let us consider the oxidation of graphite, oxidation of a graphite block. Let us see, say that this is our contain and then we have a this is sealed here, okay. this end is closed, the temperature is T, partial pressure P T okay. or the total press pressure P T is equal to 1 atmosphere and this is our graphite, hot graphite block. We have oxygen here this oxygen the temperature is such that the chemical reaction oxygen gas plus carbon solid spontaneous oxidation of carbon can take place. And what it indicates that from the ambient as many number of oxygen will go and react with carbon, the same number of moles of carbon dioxide are going to be generated. You see it is 1 mole of oxygen getting consumed in the reaction resulting in the production of 1 mole of carbon dioxide and because the carbon dioxide concentration here is larger than the carbon dioxide concentration here, if you have a carrier gas which is taking it out okay, or if oxygen is flowing here, then the carbon dioxide concentration at this particular point which is we will say that this distance is equal to capital L okay. and the concentration of carbon dioxide is going to be here something and here the concentration of carbon dioxide is going to be 0. On the other hand, oxygen is going to be consumed here okay. at this particular case, there is a oxygen is flowing in this particular direction. So, there is a huge concentration gradient, it may be pure oxygen and there is a huge concentration gradient. So, oxygen flux is in this way, now, carbon dioxide flux is in the reverse way and as per this equation we see that 1 mole of oxygen consumption, oxygen gas consumption gives rise to 1 mole of carbon dioxide. So, this becomes a typical case 
of equimolar counter current uh, diffusion. If we now say that look, so if I if I if, if we look at the equation, if we can calculate the flux of oxygen, we should be able to take calculate the numerical flux of carbon dioxide. So, the flux of oxygen will be exactly equal to the flux of uh, carbon dioxide magnitude wise. Okay? So, we should be able to find out now that what is the what is for example, if we say that what is the you know rate of oxidation. The rate of oxidation is for every mole of oxygen, we say one mole of carbon is going to be oxidized. So, if you can calculate the rate of flow or rate of oxygen consumption okay, because of this particular chemical reaction in that case what happens is that <clears throat> there is no diffusion here you must understand there is no diffusion within the solid block oxygen diffuses through the gaseous medium reaches the surface and the moment it reaches the surface this chemical reaction takes place because the thermodynamic conditions are favorable. So, the overall process actually is a function of the chemical reactions also. So, the rate of the process is a function of not only the diffusion of oxygen, but also the rate of chemical reaction. But as I said in the beginning of today's lecture that we will consider as the system is at high temperature that the chemical reactions per se are occurring very close to equilibrium okay? and that will allow us for example, uh, allow us to determine the surface concentration. For example, if you look at this particular equation, then we see that the equilibrium constant is equal to PO2 into activity of carbon and we know carbon is in the solid phase here. Okay, it is a pure carbon. So, the activity of carbon is equal to 1 and this is equal to PO2. K is known to us. Where from? Because we know given the temperature the delta G naught value is known to us delta G naught for this particular reaction okay, at a time temperature T is equal to minus RT ln K equilibrium this is k equilibrium. So, the value of delta G naught is known. Now, that sorry this is should be P C O 2. So, now that we have total atmospheric total pressure is equal to 1. So, which we can also say that P C O 2 plus P C O is sorry P O 2 is equal to 1. So, this allows us this two equations and two unknowns having k obtained from the delta G naught value substituting the temperature. We have two equations and two unknowns. So, therefore, we should be able to find out the concentration of carbon dioxide and carbon uh, monoxide. Now, you can if you look at the process that there is actually because this is a solid there is going to be a concentration boundary layer also. The transport of oxygen from here to here may be very rapid okay? and then we have a concentration gradient here and then the rate of the chemical reaction. Okay? So, the boundary layer we have a boundary layer resistance and also a transport resistance from here to here also. So, there may be a sorry there may be a difference in the concentration from here to here and then there is further if we, if we there is a bulk concentration difference here and there is a boundary layer concentration difference here, but this is ignored here. Okay? So, we say that from here to here is the path of the diffusion and then we have the chemical reaction which takes place at this particular chemical. I mean how does the oxidation takes place? So, the oxygen is made available here. So, the oxygen has to diffuse from this edge to the edge of the boundary layer first. And what do you mean by the edge of the boundary layer? It is a concentration boundary layer because there are two different gases are there. There is going to be more carbon dioxide here. So, there is going to be a concentration boundary layer because it is uh, solid. Okay? And then diffusion through the concentration boundary layer because there is no overall convection and then the chemical reaction takes place. That is how the first phase of the oxidation process takes place. Now, whatever carbon dioxide is generated that carbon dioxide diffuses through the concentration boundary layer which I would say is let us give an exaggerated drawing. So, this is a my concentration boundary layer and then we have from here we again see that uh, 
once carbon dioxide reaches here, the carbon dioxide has to diffuse. So, there are, and as I said, that the diffusion of carbon dioxide, rate of diffusion of carbon dioxide, and rate of diffusion of oxygen in these reactions are going to be identical, they are fluxes because of the nature of the chemical reactions itself. So, we assume that the, there is a diffusion from here to here, the path of the diffusion is here. So, we, we, we merge the concentration boundary layer into the whole. So, this is the entire path of diffusion over which oxygen diffuses and carbon dioxide diffuses. So, I would say now that the entire process of oxidation can be summarized into two steps. One is transport of oxygen from the edge to the interface, this is one step and this occurs by the diffusion phenomena and once it reaches here, then the chemical reaction takes place and once chemical reaction is over, that removal of the product gas or diffusion of product, product gas in the reverse direction. So, there are three kinetic steps of which two are mass transfer steps and one is the chemical reaction step. Transport of oxygen is a mass transfer step, chemical reaction is a chemical reaction step and then we have transport of carbon dioxide as a mass transfer step. But transport of carbon dioxide and transport of oxygen are equal and their rate of transport is equal. So, I can assume that of the three steps, it boils down to only two steps. One is the diffusion and the other is the chemical reaction and now I am assuming that the chemical reaction is at equilibrium because the temperature is high. The moment I say chemical reaction, so that is at equilibrium, then I say that the rate of oxidation of carbon is no more a function of the chemical reaction, but it is a function of only the rate of the diffusion process of carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide or oxygen whichever you may take because they are going to be all equal. Okay? Having said so, now that diffusion rate calculation of the diffusion rate will require this concentration which is known to me because this is the inlet concentration and this concentration of oxygen which will be obtained from the solving of this particular equation because these are the concentration at the interface, the interfacial concentration that is what we are talking about. So, the oxygen concentration or carbon dioxide concentration at this point, at this point can be calculated from here. This boundary from the process knowledge and from this boundary on the basis of the equilibrium of the given reactions. And once we know the concentration difference, then it becomes a piece of cake because it is a steady state diffusion, it is a one dimensional problem diffusion along the z direction or x direction whichever you may consider. So, if you know the concentration different, you know the path of the diffusion and you know the diffusion coefficient of the gas oxygen through a mixture of oxygen and carbon dioxide, it is all done and you should be able to find out the final expression. I will provide that final expression in the next class.